but how the transmitter knows that okay you transmitted correctly to the ec and it received it so there should be an acknowledgement right like either it is a positive acknowledgement that means i have received it properly yes if it is a not received then uh, okay i have not received there's a negative acknowledgement so the re receiver should send an acknowledgement is a positive acknowledgement or a negative acknowledgement and end of frame it's like a stuff bits will be added into the message frame um so like a very small introduction i tried to give to know about can it takes minimum 3 to 4 hours of session uh, to talk about the each and individual sessions and how exactly this master slave communication or multicasting is working in the vehicles so that is how um it's a quite of a big lecture um this is the smallest intro for it and standard frame and extended frame i tried to explain here so standard is nothing but the 11 bit fair let me say uh, all 11 bits are used for identifying your uh, the message 29 bits is like much bigger than 11 right so you can actually name uh, plenty of others you have 11 factorial combination here you have 29 factorial combination here right so it's like a more number of messages if you require then go for it 29 bit identifier so people use just 29 bit identifier in trucks basically it requires plenty of ecu so people call it as a 29 bit identifier so people are going for extended frame uh, in trucks standard frame in cars okay little um, introduction about uh, the can only here you can able to see the first picture uh, under arbitration text um so you are able to see uh, the bus signal right so bus is nothing but uh, the electrical wires which is there can high can low in the previous slide um you are able to see the orange line and the uh, blue line right so they are nothing but this can lines and uh, they are there only your electrical signal will be transformed so since you are electronics you know about ttl right ttl logics so more than 2.5 volts i just consider as a positive and one bit if it is less than 2.5 volt okay consider it less than 0 volts so zero bit so it's just a voltage division if it is a more than 2.5 just declare it as a one volt one uh, like a boolean one and if it is a less than 2.5 volt received then boolean zero so that is how exactly is passing through the electrical signals it will just communicate so here you can able to see right so bus so initially it just went down and went up so constantly down for some time constantly up for some time and constantly down and uh, up for recess a bit so here uh, so there are 1 2 3 below are there right so let us say there are different messages there there are, there are three messages which are transmitted in the bus so all the three messages received at the receiver node but which message it has to take first all are transmitted at the same time more or less it is not possible but let us say all the messages are transmitted at the same time but which message i need to accept first so how it has ecu has to know okay i have to accept first one message only not two three messages okay first one message there after third message or second message how it actually knows so this is the arbitration can in can where you will get to know which message you need to first process it so here you can able to see um, so here also at one let us consider um, before going to this you have to know about two bits zero as a dominant one as a recessive i try to mention in the left side dominant means it is a zero and the recessive means it is a one so who have the dominant at the last will be having the highest priority so that is what the can says okay okay who we will see who is having who is holding their dominant bit at last okay let us see uh, after first message 1 2 3 are there right and what first message if you see all the three are going down all the messages and inserts are going down okay no one win no one lose okay uh, and second one you see uh, second message have a recessive edge not the dominant edge and third message is also having a recessive edge but not the dominant edge so two three having the dominant edges but first message have the recessive edge uh, first message will be having the recessive edge right 
so the similar way so who is exactly losing here is nothing but your one is getting lose here and the uh, while going to the next one okay let us see two three are now quite a similar one okay left one one leave it because it lost so it is a lost priority to me and two three are having the same message structure right same plots okay fine next go to the next sector so okay both are having a resources okay fine the very next sector if you see third one is holding a resource right upper one going up is nothing but a resource uh, so third one is having the resource but second one is having the dominant edge it went to down right so that's the reason second message won the arbitration and second message will be received i mean processed first by the acu there after third there after first so 2 3 1 is the order so this is how the arbitration is being implemented in the can so if if multiple messages are received they have to see according to this algorithm and according to them only it will just process the messages okay we talked about the messages how multiple messages are received and how it is getting processed and we're going to the different types of uh, frames frames are nothing but messages so nothing but like there are different four types of frames a data frame is nothing but consists only data and uh, remote frames are nothing but so you are just sending the data to transmitter right to receiver side whatever you requested it has to go through the remote frame uh and an error frame error frame is nothing but okay your no nac acknowledgement i told right you have to send an acknowledgement whether it is a positive or negative so if it uh, in can also we have an algorithm called as like a passive error and active error so while it went reaches a 255 error count the bus has to stop the communication so it will never allow you to send any messages in the bus if it reaches a 255 error count so that is like error frames talks about overload frame if it is over overflow overloading the frames like overloading the messages um, let us say there is an extra delay between the sending and uh, the data and remote frames that's where this uh, overload frame also comes into the picture now there are four types of can frames overall so this is how the introduction about can okay going to the next topic diagnostics and vehicle and standards uh okay at the right side you will be able to see some kind of your serial numbers with respect to uds services what is uds unit services i mentioned at the starting at the beginning uh, that okay you have a number of components in your in your car and you who knows that which component exactly failed you never know okay these services will be helpful and we, this diagnostics will be helpful that okay this problem okay your air filter is causing the issues okay your brakes are failing because it's actually not working properly like uh, it's rotten or it's a short circuit battery or anything is happening anything re- with respect to electrical side or anything with respect to uh, wires are not proper anything so everything you will be getting know getting to know about this uds service so if uh, what is the services so why exactly are called as services so you cannot just read the services uh, you cannot just read the diagnostics by just connecting some kind of equipment so you need to send some commands and receive the messages and process the messages to know the information so to uh, send the commands there is some restrictions there are different commands right okay i need to read the information only or i need to reset the particular equipment to zero percentage or to higher percentage so let us say 100 percent is i need to set so different components you can able to control using this uds services so these are all main important services i try to list it down here so every service will be having a service identifier you can able to see diagnostic session control 10 is your reset 11 security access 27 test present 3 and etc 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 so these are all the different services available um so as i mentioned vision services only you can able to fire some commands to your ecu and you can able to receive the messages back to your component and see 
okay this is a very introduction about it and uh, iso here i'm trying to mention about some kind of a standards like iso 11892 iso 11891 iso 15765 14229 j1939 so these are all like a basically uh, standards so who is providing the standards yeah so there are different organizations are there which are controlling this automotive vehicles like a society for automotive engineers called as sae and uh, plenty others like uh, in pune we have actually one and uh, plenty of others are there and this is also one kind of a standards which it will be providing so every vehicle must follow these standards to implement this can architecture okay and uh, physical layer talks about the electrical voltage things data link layer about the communication network layer again about the communication but not about the data and uds has come talks about the diagnostics alone not about the communication so, but people call it as a, one is on board diagnostics and another is off board diagnostics so basically you only then you will be able to see in the trucks not in the cars and hind cars mm, there are two addressing mechanisms too physical addressing and functional addressing uh, so to talk about this addressing mechanism let us say you have a one particular message which is relevant to only one particular issue not to the multiple issues let us say i have five different nodes are connected five different issues connected in my same network okay one is trying to transmit to 2 3 4 5 okay but one wants to transmit only to five but not to 2 3 4 right so in that case physical addressing it can use okay it can actually utilize only fifth address but not the 2 3 4 address only fifth address alone it can use and it can transmit the messages so one to one communication i was talking about so it's a physical addressing i can talk about okay let us as you may call you might be calling some person it's a one to one communication only not the conference call okay if it is comes comes under the conference call it's a functional addressing or a radio is the best example for the functional addressing one will be sending the messages and uh, everybody else will be receiving the messages so will be it should be a functional addressing basically so these are the two addressing mechanisms are there in the can okay i was talking about positive and negative acknowledgement right i will give a small intro about it okay hey varun he- am i audible yes 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 varun uh, so sorry for interruption uh, actually uh, we are like going beyond the time can we just speed up a little bit and have some uh, time for q and a session and and uh, close this session as soon sure, as possible sure. yes, yeah. yes yes okay sure. thank you varun yeah thank you uh, so these are positive response and negative response and uh, response suppressed okay i was talking about so this remote uh, laptop is there right this is the your equipment and you are sending commands to your car and car is responding back it's responding by a positive or negative anything or it cannot send any response in case it's faulty so these are all the different types of diagnostics over there can and uh, okay i was talking about the errors right different stuff errors this right side table blue color which talks about the different types of errors which can occur when you are firing the command so plenty of errors are there there is a different classification which was there in uh, uds and uh, yeah how exactly you are going to fire the services commands or you are connecting your laptop towards the car how this using this obd2 connector so to every other car connector you are able to see here this under the uh, car um, steering you can able to see this column nothing but this obd connector and uh, to this connector you will be able to connect with the bottom device the l1 or orange one and uh, so to request the diagnostics and you can read any information with this device and the other one which is right side to that uh, one which is looking like a mobile phone and the next one is like a wireless wifi it's like a zigbee protocol it just connects and you can receive the data in the through wifi to your laptop or anywhere or you can just record the things in this uh, thing and you can actually play it after some time so these are all like diagnostics through can in the car this is the connector which it looks like it's a 16 bit bit connector and error memory management i was talking about different errors right how exactly the errors are classified so here you can able to see the right side diagram uh, p0302 right 
so p says a power train power train includes your engine and your transmission your uh, transmission side everything your is the power train so if it is a p it is a engine trouble or transmission trouble or a, an exhaust system trouble so if it is a chassis chassis component if it is a c at the starting it's a chassis trouble if it is a b at starting it's a body trouble that is a door is not fitting well uh, it's a body trouble error code okay and the second l1 talks about the standardization okay is a manufacturing specific code or it's a standard code it talks about 0 or 1 if it is a one for manufacturer and 3 is something about the which subsystem you are talking about okay what kind of a subsystem is faulty here now so that talks about this so it's all predetermined according to the code you can be able to go through the manual and see it how which subsystem exactly getting affected by the code okay uh, so So this is the code which will be responded from that OBD2 connector, and uh, you can actually know okay this component got failed. So this is how the error memory management comes. Evil diagnostics. I spoke a lot about it. I was telling this OBD2 connector, right? It's connected to your laptop or any way by any means you can connect, and you can just fire the services and read the services. You can know the faults. You can calibrate the engine to the best economy and. everything like uh, you can see the calibrations you can configure the part numbers you can calibrate the diagnostics to a different way uh, everything you can do uh, so this is how the connection looks like uh, evil diagnostics i already given very good example at the beginning uh, about the evil diagnostics and uh, okay which are all the tools used uh, to communicate over current your a uh, laptop is nothing but this and a so print of other tools like can organ laser monaco so there are like uh, some other tools in the industry which are there okay these are all different tools these are like a softwares if we mainly uh, from the industry people are looking with this can all skill and can laser skill and can pay very lightly uh, so basically can all is the major skill people are looking in the automotive sector 90% people will 99% will be knowing about can in automotive field who are working okay evolution in the automotive field i talked about the engines okay started with the external combustion engines in the trains after the internal combustions like a bike car and all and uh, coming to the very next slide the very next generation is like a hybrid generation mix of two fuels and uh, the very next generation is electric which is yet to come so this is how the engines are getting transformed and we are now in the century where electric is the future by 2030 everything will be going to be electric in the developed areas not in the india but developed areas everything will be going to be electric so the existing vehicles they will not be selling but the one they will be selling will be the electric only and um, yeah they should follow the euro regulations for the conventional engines i just tried to mention here i also mentioned the career path and job opportunities yes there are three different types uh, initially i talked about two only right like a product supplier and a oem so service based or like a uh, some companies are there like a lnt and tata tcs also plenty of other supply service based companies are there what they will be doing they will be hiring people and they will be sending to either suppliers or either to the oems oems are nothing but the whole world messages everywhere so this is how uh, the chain in the automotive market so product based companies and oems are much better companies compared to service based but from service based they will be on siting to the oems and you will be working under oem or a supplier so at least i try to mention some companies which are located in bangalore here like mercedes and hyundai mahindra tata motors jwm ola electric there are these companies are oems uh, comes under in bangalore and uh, there are plenty of tier one companies but i try to mention some four or five of them active auto live bosch continental tata alexa harman etc so all these companies are like a tier one suppliers and uh, um everything comes into the the hiring uh, philosophies electronics and electricals only uh mechanical is a quite less uh, quite less maybe some 10% odd um, but 90% mostly electronics and electricals will be there and the primary skills which they are looking are like a cam ethernet uds diagnostics hill testing d space etas
know so basically can and can are the quite very quite important if you want to get in into this uh, domain uh, the other stuff or related to the work and run it and python coding is a very much uh, good if you have it and uh, jenkins also is a highly appreciable skill which uh, companies are looking at